impact. Beautiful. Impact. Impact. Three for three at 1,035 using data out of my chronograph. Let's talk about how we did it. Hey there, and thanks for stopping by to check out my new content. Now I realize it's been a minute since I've created anything new, but that's because my personal life has been extremely busy and that's where my focus has been. That doesn't mean that Mountains Mullets America has been stagnant though. In the time that I haven't been creating content, there's been a handful of awesome companies that have stepped up to help me out and sent me some really cool products that I can't wait to bring to you in future videos. And that's exactly what we've got in store right here. So Utah Air Rifles actually sent me this FX True Ballistic Chronograph as well as this Element Theos 6-36 scope. I really appreciate their support. These are some really cool products that I'm excited to hit the range with. Now certainly the focus of this video is going to be this FX True Ballistic Chronograph. As you know, there's a ton of chronographs on the market and they range in price from extremely affordable to quite expensive. In my research, I would say this FX True Ballistic is on the upper range of cost for a chronograph. But again, in my research, I found that this thing is packed with some really cool features. What I want to do in this video is hit the range with this FX True Ballistic Chronograph give you a look at how it performs, what the cool features are, and how it will allow me to make impacts all the way out to distance, say a thousand yards, hopefully in this video. If you like the sounds of that, stick around. What are we gonna do? We're gonna move down to a hundred yards, and I'm gonna show you my process of zeroing this six to 36 Element Theos on this pristine 16 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. It's gonna be super simple because this chronograph does not mount to the barrel. So I can gather velocity, as well as my zero at the same time. In that portion of the video, I'm gonna show you the setup and the configuration of this chronograph. I'm gonna give you a look at how it's able to calculate BC. So that's one of the cool things about this chronograph. It is actually going to get a true BC for your rifle and your bullet in your conditions to allow you to shoot at the distance. There's nothing better than custom, and that's exactly what this chronograph is gonna do for us. The question is, how accurate will that BC number be downrange. I hope to answer that in this video. Now let me know what you think. I know there's a ton of other chronographs out there that give you your velocity, you gather your box G7BC or you google it, and that'll get you close, right? But my goal, my hope is, this is going to allow us to make first round impacts out of these distances that I plan to shoot. So let me know what do you think, do you have experience with this chronograph, and how's it been? Now what are we going to use for gear in this video? Obviously the chronograph is the FX True Ballistic. The rifle is going to be my pristine action in an MDT XRS chassis, outlier 16 inch 6.5 Creedmoor barrel with Otter Creek Labs Hydrogen L 30 cal suppressor. This thing is crazy quiet. Preparing for this video, I've taken my ears off and shot without it, and it is really cool to be able to shoot a supersonic rifle without ears. Actually, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a teaser. That's gonna happen because I think it's so cool. This is such a fun package to shoot. Now, for optics, we've got the Element Theos 6-36. Again, that was sent to me by Utah Air Rifles, and it's mounted in a Griffin 1.5 inch, or I think it's 1.45 inch, 34 millimeter single piece mount. This is a really cool mount, is it allows you to attach different accessories, say a bubble level if you want, or maybe say a Raptar mount on top. It's got dowel pins that go in to hold that rigid so that it won't slide around. So really excited to see what the scope is gonna be about. I plan to bring more content on the scope to you in a future video. This is on the upper end of scopes. This is a pushing $3,000 optic. I think it's about $2,800 from what I've seen in my research. For ammunition, we're going to be running Federal Gold Medal Match 130 Burger OTM. This is a great load. I plan to show you how it shoots at 100 yards out of this rifle. It's going to be beautiful. This outlier barrel has performed extremely well with everything I've run through it. Now, beyond that, what else do we have going on? This is something I'm really excited about. This is my first opportunity to help you out as a viewer. There's a new company out here called Warbird Pro, and they are bringing to market 
some new eye protection, which you see here. They just got this to me the other day. This is my first trip to the range with it, as well as some new electronic ears. What we have here is the Warbird Pro Intrepid Rechargeable Ear Protection. So this is going to be electronic ear protection that you can put on. It's got volumes on the side. It's got a power, some really cool features. But what I like is that it is actually rechargeable. So the next time you go to the range and you forgot to turn these off, you can just charge them up and you're good to go. Now, how can I help you out? The exciting thing is with Warbird Pro, I have my first link with a discount. So I'm able to help you out with a 10% reduction in your purchase cost if you use my code MULLETS on your Warbird Pro purchase. And what I'll do, I'll leave a link down below. I'll also include some information on Instagram for you to go to the Warbird Pro site and find your own eye protection, ear protection, soft body armor. That's something else I'll be showing off in a future video. So from here, let's move down to 100 yards. Let's start shooting. Let's see how this chronograph performs and then we'll push it out to distance. The first thing we're gonna do with our FX True Ballistic Chronograph is take it out of its protective carrying case and put it together. So pretty handy that it ships in this case. And then inside of the package, the chronograph actually ships with the base around the chronograph. So it kind of protects it. So we'll just drop that out. And then there's a little threaded stud there. We'll put that into the bottom of the chronograph. And thread it in just like that. You could also mount this to a tripod. Also in the carrying case will be like the charging cable and the instruction manual. So very nice package that it ships in. From here, let's set this up and get ready to shoot it and start using it. Before we use our FX True Ballistic Chronograph, we have to make sure it's positioned properly beside the rifle. Now the manual will give you all the dimensions, but the key items are, the muzzle ideally should be between the top and bottom of the chronograph. The middle would be best. Out here, I'm shooting over some wheat stubble, so I'm gonna elevate the chronograph just to make sure I don't get any reflections off of the wheat stubble. And then the chronograph says for best performance, you're gonna be between zero and eight inches from the side of the rifle. So the closer you can get it to the rifle, the more accurate that it's going to read. You can also adjust the position of this chronograph forward or backward based on your muzzle blast. So where I'm shooting a suppressor, there really shouldn't be any blast, but earlier I was shooting on a 7PRC and the blast actually twisted the chronograph so that it no longer read. When you read in your manual, it explains that the radar beam out of this is a cone, and you want to get the cone of radar toward your target so the bullet flies through it as much as possible for an accurate reading. Now, how do we do that? So I kind of like my position. I'm back from my muzzle just a little bit so that it'll sit flat. I'm probably about eight inches from the direction of fire off of my rifle. Now I need to aim. On the chronograph, there's a little peep sight right here, and we're just going to get down. We're going to use that peep sight, aim it at my target. So I continue to push the back up just a little bit. I'll push some stubble up underneath. Just like that, I'm aimed at my target. Now let's take a look at what we do on the chronograph to set it up for use. Now let's take a close up look at the setup of the FX True Ballistic Chronograph. So to turn it on, I'm just gonna press and hold this power button for a second. And there's my screen. Now you can see from here, it says tap power button to activate. So from here, I can just hit the power button and start shooting. So at this point, it's gonna start recording velocities. But I wanna go in and set this thing up to my specific rifle to make it as useful as possible for me. So in the upper left, there's the config button, velocity range. If I select that, yep, 400 to 4,000 feet per second should be good. It's the only option. Primary unit. I want to go feet per second like that. Secondary unit. Foot pounds. Okay, I like that. You could adjust that to joules, meters per second, whatever you want. Weight unit. I like grains. We'll leave that. You can set it to grams as well. Distance unit. I'm a yards guy, so I'm gonna leave it set to yards. Now, this FX True Ballistic Chronograph will actually measure velocities at four different distances out to 300 yards. I'm shooting here at 100 yards, so I'm gonna go every 25 yards, and it's already set up for that. So distance one, 25 yards. Distance two, 
50 yards. Distance three, 75 yards. You can see right there, I actually hit the wrong button. That's how you adjust your distance. So that's up to 80 yards. I'm gonna bump it back down to 75. Okay, and then come down. Again, I'm at 100 yards, so that's my far distance. Maybe I bumped that into 95 yards. Oops. These buttons are a little bit opposite of what you would think they are. There's 95, we'll save that. Projectile weight. In this rifle, I'm shooting 130 grain. Again, the wrong direction. So let's just roll that down to 130. All right, there we are. Barrel offset, you can change. Remember I said zero to eight. If you're further offset, you can actually adjust that. So it'll give you a more accurate reading. Channel, so you have multiple of these true ballistic chronographs on the line. You can change the different channels so they don't interfere with each other. Shutdown time, this thing auto shuts down set to 240 seconds. I assume you can adjust that maybe to, maybe I want 180 so that you don't kill your battery. Drag model. I like to shoot the G7, so it'll give me that data. Bluetooth, currently on. I'm actually gonna shut that off. We're not gonna run the app today. I just wanna use the data straight out of the chronograph. But as you can see here, interference, this would be if there's other radars on the line, it'll give you a little bar graph there saying, am I picking up something from someone else? Nobody else out here, so we're not gonna worry about that. Trigger sensitivity, if I go into this, I can adjust how sensitive it trips when it picks up the shot. I'm gonna leave it on medium, that's been working just fine. Exit without saving, nope, I wanna save what I did, so I'm gonna come up here in the upper right. And now I'm back to the original screen. From here, I can hit the power button, and my chronograph is ready to start shooting. Let's do that, let's put some rounds down range and see what kind of data we get. All right, here we go. I confirmed I'm still aimed at the target after setting my chronograph up. Now all I have to do is hit the power button and now I'm activated and ready to shoot. Now the cool thing about this chronograph, because there's nothing hanging off the end of the barrel, I can go ahead and zero and get my velocity all at the same time. Now this Element Theos, I just installed it on the rifle for this video. I put one round on paper out there just to see where I'm at and I'll go ahead and do my final zero now. I'm going to aim at the center dot. All right, you can see it read 2728. Where is my impact? I'm not seeing it. Let's send one more. Twenty-seven forty-six. I feel like I'm high and left. Let me aim with that low right dot. There I am. Up there at the top of the paper. Windage looks good. I need to come down. Call it one point six. I'll go up to the upper right dot where that impact is. Okay, right outside the dot. Right outside the dot. And that's all I've got. So as you can see, we're measuring about 2700. So you can see my muzzle velocity as well as my four distances. All right, will allow me to scroll through, get to this screen right here. So this screen is going to show me my number of shots are five, my low shot 2723, my high shot 2753, an average of 2735. It's going to give me a standard deviation of 11 with an extreme spread of 30 on this course of fire. 
and it's going to estimate my G7BC. So as you can see, lower right corner, average BC is showing 0 0.281. So I don't know how that compares to what this bullet actually is. That's what the chronograph is measuring. So from here, let me fine tune my zero, and then we'll go back and shoot steel with this BC. Before we shoot steel, I thought it would be cool to show you the setup of my shooter ballistic calculator by Kennedy Development Group using the data that we pulled out of the FX True Ballistic Chronograph earlier. As you can see, I've already got the pristine 6.5 16-inch outlier loaded. I'm going to go into ammo. I've already created a profile for the 130 burger load. I know my bullet diameter is 0.264, weight is 130, bullet length is 1.295. I cheated and looked that up. My muzzle velocity out of the chronograph was 2735. I'm using the G7 drag model and the BC that we pulled out of the chronograph was 0.281. That's what I've loaded in for my 100 yard zero. Got my atmosphere set as close as I can. And now what I'm going to do, that target down there is a 12 inch circle, 505 yards. Let's just take a look at man, altitude. I'm probably closer to 1300. Temperature, wind speed. I'm going to call it like five miles an hour out of the kind of seven o'clock. All right. So this is calling for a solution of 2.8 mils to 505. Now let's shoot it. While we shoot, I'm also going to run the chronograph to see if it will measure all the way out to 300 yards as advertised. So let me set that up quick. So I'm going to go every 75 yards. So what I'm curious about with that setting is will it calculate a more true BC out there at the further distances. Now with that, let's put our first rounds on steel. Remember we're calling for 2.8. I'm going to go ahead and dial that on. All right. There's 2.8. Wind is very little. It's a 12 inch plate. I'm not going to come off the plate. Impact. Looks like maybe just a little bit top edge. I'm going to come down a tenth. Same wind call. Impact. Pretty cool. It's measuring the velocity all the way out to 300 yards. Impact. Impact. Let's do one more. Impact. All right, so this thing measured velocity all the way out to 300 yards. Come up was pretty close on 2.7 versus it calling for 2.8. Now let's take a look at our data. And it's showing an average of 2732, which is exactly what we saw at 100 yards. It's showing an adjusted BC of 0.287, which I guarantee when we plug that in, we'll correct that tenth that we saw. So let's do that. I'm back in my shooter app. Now let's go back into my 130 load and edit that G7 up to 
287. And we will run that same solution. Ah, it's still 2.8, so it didn't actually change the number in the calculator. But now I have a target out there at like 775. Let's see what my solution calls for there. All in for 5.7. Let's see what happens after we adjusted our BC. Let's transition out to that 775 yard target with our adjusted BC out of the last course of fire. Call in for 5.7 mil, so I'll dial that on. There you go. Gotta get up above that mount to see the scope marking. So, put a little more magnification. Parallax looks good. I'm gonna hold left. All that I have. Okay, look like it went left, possibly a little bit high. The chronograph is reading out to 300 yards. Cut that wind hold back to this left edge. All right, let's come down. Come down, call it four tens. Same wind hold. Impact on the right edge. The original wind call wasn't that far off. Pack. Ooh. Going back a little bit. Pack. Do the same thing again. All right. We're measuring out to 300 yards. In case you can't see it, it's 2712 with the muzzle. 75 yards is 2596. 150 is 2485. 225 is 2374. And 300 is 2268. Elevation looks pretty good on those impacts and I'm at 5.3. So it seems like, well, let me check what my BC is saying. Actually, my BC has pushed up. So now it's saying I'm at an average of 2730 with a BC of 0.296. So let's plug that into the calculator and see what that data says. So that course of fire at 775 landed me at 5.3 mils and a higher BC than we had previously. So let's go in and adjust our load. Muzzle velocity, I'm going to bump that down to. 2730. GC, I'm going to go to 296. Everything else should be pretty close. Let's check our 775 number, 5.6. So it did adjust it down a tenth. So it's looking like we're not exactly dead on. So for me to get to 5.3, let me go in and do a manual adjustment of my BC. Let's go to like a point. Three, one. Nope, need more than that. Three, two, five. More than that. Three, five. More than that. Now it is worth noting, before I started shooting this, I did achieve a pretty solid 100 yard zero and 100 yard group that I'll show here. So there we are, 0 0.350 to get to 5.3 mils to 775, which is what I have on the scope. Now, I got some ammo left. How about we put a target up further out and let's see what we do at further distances. I just set a full size zipstick out there at, should be just over a thousand yards. 
Yep, 1,034. All right, now let's take a look at our data. So we'll go into our 130 load. I'm currently set to the adjusted BC of 0 0.350. Let's take a look at 1,035. That's calling for 8.4 mils versus, let's go see what the FX True Ballistic BC of 296 calls for. 9.2, so about a, what is that, 0.6 mil difference. Well, I think what I'm going to do is shoot this first. So we'll shoot 9.2 first, and I'll remember what I think the adjusted number should be of 8.6. Now that said, I'm also going to run my Garmin side by side just to compare what the velocity numbers say out of the two different chronographs. Let's see if we can make some impacts out there at 1,035. I've dialed on the 9.2 that the FX True Ballistic BC called for, and I'll put my first rounds out there to see what happens. Now you'll notice I've taken my Warbird ear protection off. I'm curious to see how this Hydrogen L sounds. It seems extremely quiet. So 9.2 dialed, I'm gonna hold 0.5 left. Impact, beautiful. And that can is crazy quiet. All right, so the wind call is actually probably about 0.3. Impact. The velocity between the Garmin and the FX are identical. What a really cool rig this is. I didn't see that one. Velocity, four, per, four feet per second difference. Put my wind back. Impact. Man, now this is cool. This is hydrogen L is extremely quiet. Let's see where that one went, but it did run slow. A little bit of mirage coming off that can. A lot of mirage. Seemed like that money dropped a little bit low. Let me come up two tenths. Cut my wind hold back to nothing. Lots of mirage. Back. Now that is cool with no ears. Impact. A little bit high. I'm going to come down a tenth. Impact. Impact. Man, and the Garmin is 2759. FX True Ballistic is 2758, so identical. What is the BC calling for? Average BC of 0 0.290. So I tell you what, I really can't complain. We're at 9.3 mils which is exactly what my shooter app was calling for. So really cool to be able to measure velocity as well as calculate a true BC for your ammo. Let's wrap up with my thoughts. Well, that's a wrap. We made hits all the way out to 1,035 yards, and we wrapped up that video showing that the G7BC out of the FX True Ballistic Chronograph appeared to be spot on. That number in my shooter calculator called for 9.2 mils, and I think we wrapped up out there at about 9.3. I can't ask for better performance. When we compared it to the Garmin, you saw that the average between the Garmin on the 10 round string at 1,035 and the FX True Ballistic at 1,035 was within two feet per second of each other. So from what I'm seeing, really, really great data coming out of the FX True Ballistic chronograph. So 
Again, it's on the upper end of the price scale, but it's got some features that I find very valuable. The fact that it gives you your muzzle velocity as well as velocity out at different distances. And in this video, you saw me use that all the way out to 300 yards. That's really cool to be able to compare that to your dope chart. So your chart and your calculator, is it giving you information that's in line with what you're actually getting out of your rifle? That's one cool feature right there that I find value in. The next is that G7BC. So again, every bullet is going to have some kind of published G7BC number, but that's generic. That's at certain conditions, certain barrels, certain barrel life. Those things change. BC is not constant. And the cool thing about this FX True Ballistic Chronograph is it adjusted BC on every round fired. And again, you saw that data there at 100 yards. That BC started out at something like 2.81. But then when we got up here on top of this hill and started shooting out the distance, where we made first round impacts out there at 505 yards, we had a first round impact out there at 1035. Had a little bit of difference there at 775. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Maybe I didn't have a perfect range on that target. Not exactly sure why my data was off a couple of tenths there, but ultimately I say the data out of the FX True Ballistic Calculator redeemed itself at 1035, and I find this a really cool piece of kit. So that's the pros. The data coming out of it is awesome, extremely valuable, and will allow you to make more hits and be more consistent with your precision rifle. The cons that I noticed with this chronograph it's big, it's bulky, it does come in its own protective carrier, which is awesome. That's extra on something like a Garmin. So I like the carrier, but again, it's a little bit big. I like how the base is protection for the actual chronograph, so you don't damage that when you're moving it around or carrying it. So that's a pro. A con that I noticed is having to set it up and aim it. Now, I really didn't have any trouble in this video with this rifle. Again, this Otter Creek Labs can is extremely quiet, knocks the blast down, no problems. Earlier today, I was shooting with a 7PRC with a break. When I had that chronograph set, you know, kind of around the bipod of my rifle versus the muzzle, the blast actually spun that chronograph, and I actually only picked up 8 out of 10 shots. So you have to be careful where you mount this true ballistic chronograph. You can actually put it in front of the muzzle, behind the muzzle, beside the muzzle. It all depends on the blast and what you have to secure that chronograph. So there's a ton more in this chronograph that I can explore. There's an app that's going to allow you to create ballistic solutions out of the data of the chronograph. I didn't even get into that yet. I haven't had a chance to play with it. I just wanted to get to the range, put some rounds through this chronograph, and give you my initial impressions of how it performs. So from here, let me know what you think. Did you like the video? What do you think about the true ballistic chronograph? Certainly there at the end, I compared it to the Garmin. You know, the advantage of the Garmin, I think we all know it. That thing is small. It's extremely easy just to set it up and go. You don't have to aim. I like that. But that Garmin's only going to give you one number. You don't get the BC. You don't get the downrange numbers. You don't get some of the valuable information that you get out of the True Ballistic. So Garmin has its pros. Priced a little bit better. True Ballistic, in my opinion, is a little bit more of a premium product. But again, it's priced that way. So huge shout out to Utah Air Rifles for shooting me this chronograph as well as this element Theo scope. I don't know if you noticed it through the trigger camera, but this thing has an awesome view downrange. I was actually able to spot trace really without much trouble today using this scope. I'll do a review on the scope itself here down the road. These are just my first rounds through it, getting it zeroed. Handful of things I like about it. First off, I like how easy the throw lever is there, change the magnification. I like the fact that you can re-zero the turret without tools. You just loosen this top piece right here, reset the turret. That is actually awesome. That way you don't forget the wrong wrench or you don't have a wrench that's stripped. This is a really cool solution. So from there, really excited to get back and start creating some new content for you guys. Stay tuned. I've got more in the works. If you've made it this far, I'd ask for your help to grow this channel. The way you can do that is subscribing. Join my channel so that you're in line to see my next video drop when it happens. Like this video, comment, let me know what you think. Do you want to see me do more with the FX True Ballistic Chronograph? Let me know. I love chatting with each of you down below. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place to interact. And finally, when you're searching for new eye protection, ear protection, or soft body armor, don't forget to check out Warbird Pro and use my discount code for 10% off, and that is Mullets. So from here, Thanks for watching. Hope you'll join me in my next video.